Madagascar hissing cockroaches for Halloween. Let's see what's cooking. It's time for yo yo bags. 12. This is a photo of an actual, real Madagascar hissing cockroach, and this is kind of the look we're going for. Hello everyone. Now what I'm making here is a basic yeast donut recipe. You can use whatever recipe you want. That's three quarters of a cup of warm milk, two and a quarter teaspoons of instant active dry yeast, a quarter cup of white granulated sugar. And then I just blend that together until the yeast is dissolved in the milk. And then I add in two eggs. And I actually ended up with two double yolkers here. So it looks like four. Blend that in a little bit. And then you're going to add in some flour, about three to three and a half cups of flour. Um, whenever you're making anything that's donut or bread, it's it's never an exact amount of flour. You're gonna put in enough flour and beat it until the dough starts to come together and pull away from the sides of the bowl. It'll still be super sticky though. Take it out, put some more flour on the countertop, and then you're gonna knead it and knead it, adding more flour as needed until you get a smooth and elastic dough that's just slightly sticky but not super sticky. And this is kind of a feel that you get when you make bread. Now, I the recipe actually called for a couple of tablespoons of melted butter in this, and I forgot to add it, but they turned out fine anyway. Then take your dough ball. I greased a bowl by putting a little bit of oil in it, put the dough ball in, turn the dough ball upside down just to coat it with oil, cover it, and you're gonna put it somewhere warm to rise for about two hours or so until it's doubled in size. Then you're gonna roll it out to about a half inch, three quarters of an inch thickness, and then you're gonna cut out some shapes. Now, if you have an oval shaped cookie cutter, that would be awesome. I'm using an egg shaped one because that's the closest I had to a large oval. And then the heads of these cockroaches are gonna be the same as the bodies, but just cut in half. So some of those you're gonna cut in half and those will be the heads of the cockroaches. And then I transferred those ovals onto some parchment paper on a cookie sheet and I sprinkled a little bit of flour on there to make sure it didn't stick. Then I use an egg wash, which is just egg mixed with a little bit of water, a couple of teaspoons of water. And I brushed one end of the oval, the narrow end, and then I added one of the heads. Now the reason I put the egg wash on there is just I wanted to make sure that the heads stuck to the bodies and they didn't come apart. Once you're done assembling all the little cockroach bodies, then take a sharp knife and you're going to just score a line on the head. Not quite center, a little bit left of center. Just to make a line there. Now scoring means you're going to slice through, but not all the way through, just, just a little bit. Now for each dough portion, I use a pair of scissors just to cut out kind of a little parchment paper just for each piece. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. Then you're going to allow these to rise until doubled in size. It's going to take probably less than an hour. Second rising is always faster. Now the first time I tried these, I didn't put them on parchment and they stuck to the, the cookie sheet. So when I tried to lift the little bodies off of there, they deformed or they deflated. Like all that carbon dioxide in there started coming out and they weren't very pretty. So with the parchment paper, it allows you to lift them and then just gently put them in the oil and then you don't have to worry about that happening. That oil is at about 350 degrees. Put them in, cook them for about two, three minutes per side until they're brown, and then flip them over and cook the other side. And then just put them on some paper toweling to drain. Now for the antenna and the leg details, roll out the scraps of dough you have left to a very thin thickness, quarter inch, eighth of an inch, as, thick, as thin as you can get it and then slice it into long strips using a pastry cutter or a pizza cutter or a sharp knife. And then you're gonna fry those. Now, keep in mind you want some curly antenna, you want the legs to be kind of curved. So when you put them in the oil, just see if you can get them to curl up a little bit so that you have some interesting shapes. And then same thing, you just fry them until they're golden brown, turn them over and fry the other side. Now for the glaze, we're using four tablespoons of butter, half a cup of chocolate chips. Put that in the microwave until the butter is melted and hot. Stir it around until you get something nice and smooth. Then we're gonna add in one cup of powdered sugar, also called icing sugar, confectioner's sugar. Stir it around, it's gonna be chunky looking, but now we're gonna add in four tablespoons of hot water. And just add it a little at a time 
until you get a fairly runny glaze that's nice and smooth. Then all you have to do is take your cooked and cooled donuts, dip one side in the glaze, let the excess drip off, and put them on a cookie sheet or something like that. And I pop mine in the fridge just to allow that to set up nicely. And then we're ready to decorate these to make them look like Madagascar hissing cockroaches. You'll need some of those little wrapped caramels. Unwrap them, put a few in the microwave for just a few seconds until it starts to warm up and soften up. Put them together in like a clump so you have something to work with. I put mine between sheets of parchment paper and I roll them out uh, thinly with a rolling pin. And then I used my pastry cutter just to cut strips about a quarter to a half inch wide. The width of these strips are going to be up to you, as you'll see in a moment, depending on how you want to look. Then you'll take your donut that's set. The glaze will set. It won't be completely dry, though. It'll always stay a little bit sticky. Then you're going to add your caramel pieces to the body portion of the cockroach. And then you're just going to lay them over top and then I tuck the ends underneath a little bit so it looked like it went all the way around the body. And you can add as many or as few as you want. Like I said, if you make these really thin, you'll have more. Probably thinner will be better, it'll look more authentic or real. And now we're gonna add some antenna and some legs. So just make a hole with a skewer or a toothpick or something. Just so that it's easier to insert the antenna because the antenna will be delicate. These are crispy donut pieces that break easily. So insert those and as you can see that's why I said try to get some pieces that have curves in them so that it just looks more like an insect. And with the legs same thing I made some holes in between those stripes and then I added the legs. Three on each side. Now this is these are cool just the way they are. And if I were gonna make these for a crowd, that's probably what I would do. I'd probably leave it here, but the website where I found this recipe, they recommend that you use some black food coloring or dark brown food color that you dilute with a little bit of water. And then you're just gonna brush it on just to add some color and detail. And I agree, they do look better with the food color on it, but realistically, I don't think I would wanna bite into that much black food color, just cause it's messy. So I would either use very, very little or none at all for this particular project. But again, that's up to you. I added some to the legs, to the caramel stripes, just to give it a little bit more uh, detail. And there they are. These are best kept in the refrigerator. Now the original recipe actually makes this like a Boston cream donut where they have a cream filling that you inject into the cockroaches so that when you bite into them, there's a creamy center, which would be awesome. However, I didn't do it with these, partially because my family doesn't really like the Boston cream donuts, so they wouldn't have gotten eaten and uh, I just made plain. So that part is up to you. Um, I suggest that you might be able to make maybe two or three of these and then the rest of them will just be plain donuts, maybe, because these do take a lot of time. They're time consuming and um, however, the end result is, is pretty impressive. So I will put a link in the description box to where I originally found this recipe and I know it's been done many times on other YouTube channels, but I always wanted to give these a try. Now, another thing you can do with the antenna and the legs, if you have any extras, because I made a whole pile of them, is I just toss them with a little bit of cinnamon sugar and here you have some nice deep fried worms. Thanks for watching. I also have another cockroach themed Halloween cupcake here it is right on your screen. Also, if you want to see it, click on it. And if you want to see my Halloween cupcake playlist, go ahead and check it out.